Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, you are welcome in this class. Uh, topic of this lecture is sustaining crop production under rain fed environment by water harvesting and watershed management. The learning objectives are understand the contribution and characteristics of the rain fed lands, learn the water harvesting and water management techniques for sustaining uh, production in rain fed areas difficult words ecological zone smaller than a region but considerably larger than a farm with a definable combination of climate relief altitude adaptive conditions and natural vegetation growing period is the period of the year when both moisture and temperature conditions are suitable for crop production irrigated land areas artificially provided with water other than rain for improving pastures or crop production rain fed cultivation the crop establishment and development are commonly uh, completely sustained by rainfall runoff is the portion of the total precipitation you may consider it as rainfall uh, from a given area that appears in natural or artificial surface streams soil degradation decline in soil quality is commonly caused through improper use by humans this includes physical chemical and or biological deterioration tide ridge placing bunds or ridges along with contour connected at intervals by ridges along the slope the aim is to reduce runoff and increase infiltration and water storage so this is basically aimed to preserve the water to avoid or reduce the losses of the water topography refers to the differences in elevation of the land surface on a broad scale it is derived from the most representative or characteristic slope gradient of the area around the site water logging a state of of and in which the subsoil water table is located at or near the surface water is accumulated in the root zone of the soil watershed the area which supplies water by surface and subsurface flow from rain to given point in the drainage system so now let us see what is difference between rain fed farming and dry land farming so actually all such farming are rain fed they are solely dependent upon the rainfall uh, all kind of dry land farming is rain fed and rain fed is naturally rain fed so sometimes there are some confusion in the terminology but here in this lecture and most of the time people consider rain fed farming and dry land farming separately because the quantity of water is different under both conditions in one conditions rain fed farming condition they say that it is 1150 mm rainfall per annum However, for dry land, they group it in uh, less than 750 uh, millimeter rainfall. Now we are going to discuss all these issues. So, rain-fed farming and dry land farming are often used interchangeably, but this is a serious error. Many times people make error. They both exclude irrigation. That is true, but beyond that, they can differ significantly. For example, dry land farming is a special case. of rain fed agriculture practice in arid and semi arid regions in which annual precipitation is about 20 to 35% of the potential evapotranspiration means there is deficit of moisture here conditions of moderate to severe moisture stress occur during a substantial part of the year greatly limiting yield potential and in which farming emphasizes water conservation in all practices throughout the year 
rain fed systems although they are uh, they include dry land systems now i seek your attention you should know that all kind of rain fed systems include dry land systems can also include systems which emphasize disposal of excess water maximum crop yield and high inputs of fertilizer this was the opinion of stewart so there may be cases where you can have excess water and it becomes difficult to dispose this excess water so that will be part of rain fed farming actually so there are three components of a successful dry land farming one is retaining the precipitation on the land number two reducing the evaporation from the soil surface to increase the portion of evapotranspiration used for transpiration means here it is just water conservation and utilizing crop that have drought tolerance and that fit the precipitation pattern so there are three major component one is related to environment or or rainfall means you need to conserve it you need to harvest it and second is uh, some measures by which you can reduce the losses of the water and third option is crop management practices by these three measures we can improve the productivity of rain fed or dry lands although these components have been known for centuries new technologies continue to be developed that increase crop production in water short areas now see some definitions of dry farming dry land farming and rain fed farming many times students really get confused so to overcome that kind of confusion uh, you you must see it now so dry farming is cultivation of crops in regions with annual rainfall less than 750 mm this is very clear crop failure is a most common due to prolonged dry spells during the crop period these are arid regions with a growing season period of adequate soil moisture less than 75 days are available very short period is available as a growing season moisture conservation practices are necessary for crop production now after dry farming second kind of farming is dry land farming it is cultivation of crops in regions with annual rainfall more than 750 mm in spite of prolonged dry spells crop failure is relatively less frequent compared to dry farming it is better better conditions here and the water or rainfall can be up to 1150 mm starting from 750 mm to 1150 mm and these are semi arid tracts with growing periods between 75 and 120 days in the last case it was less than 75 but in case of dry land farming it is uh, uh, 75 to 120 days period however adequate drainage is required especially for vertizol or black soils so in this case sometimes there may be excess of water in the soil that needs to be drained out from the soil to get the best productivity now third group is rain fed farming so crop production in region with annual rainfall more than 1150 1150 means it is very good rainfall and that much of water may not be there under dry land agriculture so this kind of farming is uh, they treat it rain fed for farming i repeat that dry land is also a kind of rain fed farming but but they have been classified just based upon the rainfall and also because the practices followed for getting good production in these area or sustaining production under dry land and rain fed we will require different technologies some may be common but many technologies may be different for example in rain fed farming you need to put lot of emphasis on water harvesting recycling of water and also on storage of water and watershed management however in dry land emphasis is generally given on in situ moisture conservation conserving the rains whatever have been have been received into the soil so that we can grow crop successfully so in rain fed farming crops are not subjected to soil moisture stress during the crop period emphasis is often on disposal of excess water so these are humid regions with growing period more than 120 days so maybe sub humid or humid periods are rain fed farming and in dry land areas they are mostly in arid and semi arid regions in dry farming and dry land farming emphasis on 
soil and water conservation, sustainable crop yields and limited fertilizer use according to soil moisture availability. In rain fed agriculture, emphasis is on disposal of excess water, maximum crop yield, high levels of input and control of water erosion. Because here you may get sufficient supply of water. Of course, of course it, is not, uh, it is not always there. Sometimes there may be droughts, sometimes there may be floods in rain fed areas also. But in general, there is no, not much deficit of moisture. Here the excess moisture may be an issue. Therefore, one can use high yielding varieties, one can use uh, higher doses of fertilizer also compared to the dry land areas. Now you see differences in dry farming, dry land farming and rain fed farming in tabular form so that you can easily remember and do your own analysis of these. So rainfall annum per annum in millimeter, in dry farming it is less than 750 uh, millimeter, in dry land farming it is 750 to 1150 millimeter and more than 1150 is rain fed farming. And later on in the next slide you will, you will see that dry farming and dry land farming have been combined and they, they have been grouped just into one. And now see the differences in moisture availability. In dry farming it is acute shortage because rainfall is less than 750 millimeter. And dry farming comparatively less problem but shortage is there. And, but in rain fed farming moisture is enough. Crop growing season is less than 75 days in dry farming because of moisture scarcity. And dry land farming it is up to 120 days from 75. And in rain fed farming you got longer growing period of more than 120 days. Now growing regions are mostly arid in dry farming. Dryland farming is semi-arid and rain fed farming is common in humid areas. Now cropping systems it of course depend, depends upon the growing season of level. So cropping system in dry farming is single cropping or intercropping at best. And here in dryland farming also you get single cropping or intercropping. In both the cases double cropping is not possible. Double cropping means growing two, kind, uh, two crops in a year, two different crops in a year in succession. So in rain fed farming inter or multiple cropping is possible. Some more differences in these terms. So dry spells are most common in dry farming, less frequent in dry land farming and no occurrence, generally no occurrence in rain fed farming. Crop failure is more frequent, less frequent and crop failure is rare in rain fed farming. Constraints are wind erosion in dry land uh, dry farming, wind erosion and water erosion in dry land farming and water erosion is major problem in rain fed farming. So this all happens because of differences in rainfall. Measures required, what kind of measures can be adopted to sustain the crop production? So moisture conservation practices in situ should be given emphasis here in dry farming in dry land farming, moisture conservation practices and sometimes drainage for verti soils or heavy soils. And in rain fed farming, proper drainage is required. Now see, as I told you, this United Nations uh, Economic and Social Commission, UNESC for Asia and the Pacific, distinguished dry land agriculture mainly into two categories or you can say rain fed agriculture into two categories, dry land farming and rain fed farming. So the distinguishing features of these two types are given in the table. You can see again the differences. Just now we have two groups. So most of the soil scientists, agronomists and people in India now consider two groups, dry land farming and rain fed farming. I have talked uh, a lot or lecture of dry land farming just before this lecture and now we are discussing the rain fed farming. So rainfall is less than 750 millimeter that will be dry land and in rain fed farming it is more than 750 millimeter. In moisture, uh, moisture availability to the crop shortage and here rain fed farming enough. Growing season less than 200 days in dry land farming and in rain fed farming it is more than 200 days. Growing regions, so dry land farming falls in arid and semi-arid as well as uplands of 
subhumid and humid region, but only in uplands of humid and subhumid regions. Rainfed farming falls in humid and subhumid regions. Cropping system in dryland, it is single crop or intercropping. In rainfed, intercropping or double cropping is also possible. Constraints wind and water erosion in dry farming, dryland farming, and here in rainfed farming, it is mostly water erosion. Now, see the importance of the rainfed agroecosystems. So, rainfed agroecosystems occupy a considerable place in Indian agriculture too covering 80 million hectare in arid, semi-arid and sub-humid climate zone, constituting nearly about 57 percent of the net cultivated area. So, on an average, you can say very significant area is under rain-fed. So, dear students, many times these data and percentages vary, because sometimes different people make different estimates. This is one. And data also changes with the year. So, therefore, sometimes you will find uh, that this person has given 57 percent, other person has given 60 percent. It does not make much difference. It just give you guess or idea that okay, 60 percent, 57 percent, 62 percent. So, it does not make much difference. Overall, it shows you the picture, the greater picture that what is there. So, overall you can see that you can say 60 percent of the land is under, uh, under rain fed farming. That, that is it. So, rain-fed regions support also 60 percent of the livestock and 40 percent of human population and contribute 50 percent to the food grains and several special attribute commodities such as seed spices, dyes, herbs, gum, etc. So, in that sense, rain-fed farming is very, very important for food security of the country. The concept of rain-fed agriculture, rain-fed farming. So, from now onward, most of the things we will talk of rain-fed farming, where you get rainfall more than 750 millimeter. The concept of rain-fed agriculture or farming, you can call it agriculture, you can call it farming. Just here wish to say you that there is no difference in terms agriculture and farming. Both are taken as synonymously. So, you can call it rain-fed agriculture or rain-fed farming it will not make any difference. In, in general, in India, we call it rain-fed farming and uh, outside India, some, some western countries or people from other countries, they call it rain-fed agriculture. However, there is no difference. So, the concept of rain-fed agriculture under which both dry farming and dry land farming is included has been changed. Dry farming was the earlier concept for which amount of rainfall was less than 500 millimeter annually and remained the deciding factor for so many years up to say 60, 70 years. In modern concepts, as you have seen in the last table, dryland areas are those where the balance of moisture is always deficit side. In other words, annual evapotranspiration exceeds precipitation. Uh, success of crop production in these areas depends on the amount and distribution of rainfall as these influences the stored soil moisture and moisture used by crops. Amount of water used by crop and stored in soil is governed by the water balance. So, we should see the water balance equation E t is equal to P minus R plus S. So, when water balance of the when balance of the equation shift towards right side. So, precipitation is higher than the E t. So, that there may be water logging or it is it may even lead to runoff and flooding. Uh, on the other hand, it is if the balance shift to the left side, that means E t becomes higher than precipitation. So, resulting in drought. So, in general, the purpose is to conserve the moisture, so that the regular supply of water is ensured to the crops. Taking the country as a whole, as per meteorological report, severe drought in large area is experienced once in 50 years and partial drought once in 5 years while floods are expected every year. So, in rain fed area in general, you will not have much deficit of water, rather you can have some flooding situation. So, in fact, the balance of the equation is controlled by weather, season, crops and cropping pattern. Some crops may require more water, some crop may require less water. 
Now see present status of uh, rain fed farming. Uh, growing of crops entirely under rain fed condition is known as dry land agriculture. India has about 108 million hectare as rain fed area uh, which is about 67 percent of 143 million. Some estimates uh, recent estimates suggest that 143 million hectare has been reduced to 139 million hectare. So, which is uh, a serious issue that net cultivated area is declining in the country particularly due to urbanization, construction of roads, construction of uh, irrigation uh, canals and some several other uses like industries. So, lot of uh, we are really losing lot of agricultural land for some other purposes. So, dry farming contribute in total food production 44 percent, area under oil seeds like groundnut, rapeseed, mustard is 80 percent, whatever total area under oil seed is there in the country, 80 percent in general is in rain fed farming, remaining 20 percent may be irrigated area. Nearly 67 million hectare of rain fed area falls in the mean annual precipitation range of 500 to 1500 millimeter. So, there may not be much shortage of water. Average annual rainfall of the country is 1200 millimeter most of you know or 120 centimeter amounting to 400 million hectare meter million hectare meter of rainwater over the country's geographical area of 329 million hectare. So, the quantity of rainfall is, is genuinely too high, it is not too low, it is mostly the distribution, it is mostly inefficient management, we cannot manage the huge quantity of water received. However, distribution across the country varies from less than 100 millimeter in extreme arid areas of western Rajasthan to more than 3600 millimeter in northeast states and 1100 millimeter from east coast to 2500 to 3000 millimeter in the west coast. So, this uh, variability, lot of variability in rainfall is there. Somewhere you are not getting it at all and somewhere you are getting is too, too much rainfall. You can see this kind of data is there. So, lot of variability is there in the rainfall. Broad area of summer monsoon actively extend from 3 degree north to 30 degree south latitude and from 30 degree west to 16.5 degree east longitude. So, India ranks first in rain fed agriculture globally in both area and the value of the produce. So, our concern is really more and we also have too much of population. Very shortly, maybe in next 5-10 years, we can be 1.5 billion and maybe uh, in, in next few years, we can superset China also. So, rain fed regions in India contribute substantially towards food grain production. Individual, if you see, 44 percent of rice 87 percent of coarse cereals like sorghum, palm millet, maize and 85 percent of food legumes, 72 percent of oil seeds, 65 percent of cotton and 90 percent of minor millets. So, very a great chunk of food is coming from rain fed areas. So, it is very, very important and uh, dear students food legumes means here pulses, the pulse crops are food legumes. Rain fed agriculture with nearly 58 percent of the cultivated area contribute to 40 percent of the country's food production. Now, see coming to the major constraints and problems in rain fed areas. We should see what are the issues uh, related to sustain the crop production. So, number one is uncertain, erratic and uneven distribution of rainfall. Just few slides back, we have seen the variability of the rainfall. And that is not sure that when you will get, get this rainfall, when you may not get it. And then other issue is degradation of forest and natural tree cover. In these areas uh, due to human wants and due to some other reasons, people have destroyed the forest, deforestation has occurred uh, somewhere, some places at a very large scale for many reasons, but uh, that will lead to uh, soil erosion, that will, that will lead to reduce water and up to some, some extent deforestation can also lead to reduce monsoon also. 
low soil fertility and soil health in these areas, shortage of drinking water and assured irrigation for crop, considerable area under wasteland, lot of waste land area falls in the rain fed farming areas, cultivation of marginal lands due to population and animal pressure, lack of infrastructure facilities and, uh, and facilities like infrastructure improves your energy, power, your electricity, your roads, uh, storage, structures, something like that. Shortage of fuel, wood and fodder. Continuance of traditional varieties and management practices by the farmers. Improper management of community land. Now, sustainable crop production in rain-fed farming. How best we, uh, we can sustain the production in rain-fed farming. So, maximization of crop production on sustainable basis. This is important that we should increase the production, but it should be on sustainable basis. Means, we can meet the demand of the present day's population or people without compromising the demand and requirement of the future generation. They should also get the same or rather more food, more uh, other commodities they require. And also without deterioration of the natural resources and without polluting the environment. Safe disposal of excess water, adoption of efficient crop management practices uh, during deficit of water or excess of water. Water harvesting is important approach that can be he helpful in enhancing the productivity and sustainability in these areas. Another is watershed management to conserve soil and improve collection of water. Efficient varieties, crops and crop management, soil management. So all these practices can be integrated and among them the best one can be chosen so that we get a maximum production and sustainable production from these lands. In these lands or rain fed areas, the most important part is to recycle the water through water harvesting. Water harvesting it has three stages, first collect the water, store the water and use it. But during this time, when you collect the water, this water is collected from the watersheds. So management of watershed is also important, so that erosion is, is stopped and you get maximum collection of the water from the catchment area or the watershed area. So therefore, we wish to discuss in detail water harvesting and watershed management, which is very much needed in rain fed farming. So water harvesting, the process of runoff uh, collection during periods of peak rainfall in storage tanks, ponds is known as water harvesting. Runoff means when rainfall occur, some water is retained in the place where it falls and after saturation and after water logging or after certain period of time, that particular place or soil may not keep this water continuously in its place. So that runs away, that water runs away from that, that place. So this loss of water is your runoff, means water is running off, it is moving away from the place it was stored. So the runoff water is collected from treated or untreated land surfaces or catchments or rooftops and storing it in an open farm pond or closed water tanks, reservoirs or in the soil itself in situ water storage or moisture storage for irrigation or drinking purposes. So in that case, some people call it runoff farming. So runoff farming and rainwater harvesting agriculture are actually synonymous terms which imply that farming is done in dry areas by means of runoff from a catchment. So runoff farming is basically a water harvesting system especially designed to provide supplemental or life saving irrigation to crops especially during periods of soil moisture stress. So this supplemental or life saving irrigation means if you do not use water at that particular stage, there will be maximum losses in crop growth and productivity. Now components and principles of water harvesting. All water harvesting systems have three components, the catchment area or the watershed, the storage structure and the command area. Catchment area is your donor area, 
from where water is coming. Water is getting collected and draining from a common place. And then the storage facility, you need some structure to store this runoff water. So a storage facility is a place where the runoff water is stored from the time it is collected until it is used for human beings and their needs. So further these components, uh, the area in which collected water is used is called command area. Means you have harvested the water, you have collected the water. Now as per need, now you want to use this water, then you will uh, use this water for agriculture. So the area in which collected water is used in is called command area, means wherever you will apply irrigation from this much of water, that will be under command of that storage structure. Therefore, it is called as command area. The donor area is generally not suitable for crop production. So you can see in this picture the three part or component of water harvesting. There is some catchment area. This can be in hectares or million hectares also. This can be very, very large area or can be 10 hectare, 20 hectare or 100 hectare area. And then water will start moving from this area. And then if you have water harvesting process, you can store it in the tanks or, or the structures you have and then it can be distributed or used for irrigation in the cultivated area or command area. The aim of water harvesting is to mitigate the effects of temporal shortage of rain, so called dry space, groundwater recharge. There are number of purposes of water harvesting, like it can help in the groundwater recharge, risk minimizing in drought prone areas, combating desertification by tree plantation, to cover both household needs for drinking purpose, for cooking purpose, sanitation, as well as for productive use like protective irrigation. The main uh, elements of rainwater harvesting technologies are mainly due to the limited supply and uncertainty of rainfall. The others are increased soil erosion when slopes are cleared for higher runoff rates. So erosion can be reduced loss of habitat of flora and fauna on these slopes and depressions, mainly due because of deforestation, some uh, several flora and fauna are vanishing from many areas of the world and also from India. And as you know, if we harvest or if we destroy or if we uh, deforest one tree, then we are losing a lot of biodiversity. On one tree, you can see a lot of insects, lot of ants, birds, variety of animals are living and they are dependent upon each other. So life cycles of many organism uh, becomes uh, difficult and some of them can become extinct also. Just by cutting one tree, you are killing thousands of insect pests uh, and so on. So it is destroying the flora and fauna. Uh, upstream, downstream conf conflict among the beneficiary. This is also uh, an issue because this harvested water will flow through kilometers, many kilometers and, and there may be some conflicts in users also. The users who are on the upper end will not leave much water for the people who are on the lower end or tail side. So such conflicts are quite common in rainfall also, in, in canal area, canal command areas also. Competition among the farmers and the herders. Herders are people who raise your sheep or goat or some other animals. These are herders. Now, importance of water harvesting. What is the value of water harvesting? In arid, semi-arid areas where rainfall is low, water harvesting makes farming possible on part of the land, provided other production factors are favorable. It can provide additional water to supplement rainfall to increase and stabilize crop production in dry land areas. It can alleviate the risk associated with the unpredictability of rainfall in drought prone areas. In remote areas like islands and deserts, where public water supply for domestic and animal rearing is not available, inducing runoff from treated area and is stored in a reservoir cistern for later use in a common place is a common practice. In islands and high hilly areas, 
due to limited extent of fresh water aquifers, rainwater harvesting is the most preferred source of water for domestic use. The arid lands suffering from desertification, water harvesting would improve the vegetative cover and help to halt the environmental degradation. Water harvesting arrest decline in groundwater level. So overall you can see there are several benefits of the water harvesting. Now let us see what are the water harvesting structures. At present most water harvesting structures are built under the holistic program of watershed development which includes rooftop rainwater harvesting for domestic use. Now it is getting uh, importance by people also. Now many buildings, many places, particularly new buildings of government, there this rainwater harvesting is almost compulsory. So now we got some interest of the people. Uh, creating surface water storage in the form of check dams, dug ponds for irrigation and drinking. So some engineering structures can be used. Recharging groundwater through check dams percolation tanks, subsurface dikes to augment water availability in wells, tube wells, hand pumps, etc. So such a storage a structure can be used to recharge the groundwater. Soil conservation through afforestation, gully plugging, contour cropping, control and regulation of grazing. Soil moisture conservation, particularly in rain fed hilly areas through bench terracing, contour bunding, khadins to suppress soil salinity, improving cropping pattern, crop calendar. So many of the in situ water harvesting techniques are available and they are also being practiced by the farmers. The thing is those who are not following it, they should follow it. So also we need to improve the marketing facilities for farm produce because in those areas most of the farmers are uh, socio-economically or economically backward farmers small land holding, low income. So therefore, proper marketing will give them benefit or more profit from their farming. So providing additional livelihood options such as dairy, poultry, we need to combine two or three enterprises through farming system approach or farming system development or integrated farming system so that their income is, is raised, natural resources are also protected environment is protected and their income is also raised. Promoting social forestry to meet the fuel wood requirement where alternative sources of fuel are not available. Not just social forestry, it should be agroforestry also. So in, through social forestry, people can use common lands. Uh, sometimes in the villages or in rural areas, certain common lands are there where all the people, all the villagers have equal right, full right but they are to be used by the community. So on those community lands, some forestry can be done, some trees can be planted, that can be useful for uh, supply of local fuel wood, etc. Similarly, agroforestry can be adopted that will conserve soil, increase carbon sequestration and also income of the farmer. Now see, there are different techniques of rainwater harvesting and they are, can be grouped into five one is your surface water harvesting. WH here means water harvesting. It includes farm ponds, sunken ponds, dug wells, tanks, percolation tanks, nala band, johars, nadis, khadins. There are different names for the pond, talab. Then roof water harvesting, tanka, kunds, plastic bags. There, there could be different options for roof water harvesting. Runoff induced water harvesting means you have forced to, to get the runoff. So here runoff farming, water spreading, micro catchments and macro catchments. Micro catchment means a small area through which water drains into a common point. In situ water harvesting means within the plot, within the soil. Inter plot or inter row harvesting. BBF means broad bed furrow system, dead furrows compartmental bunds, contour, graded bunds, vegetative barriers, strip cropping. For details on these, uh, these kind of structures, students are advised to consult any book on dryland agriculture or any chapter that gives you information of rainwater harvesting. Then is your flood water harvesting. 
reservoirs, check dams, any cuts and sand dams. So, number of options are available to harvest this water. Water harvesting is done both in arid and semi-arid regions with certain differences. In arid regions, the collecting area or catchment area is substantially in higher proportion compared to the command area. Actually, the runoff is induced in catchment area in arid lands, whereas in semi-arid areas, runoff is not in induced in catchment area, only the excess rainfall is collected, means whatever uh, coming in the form of natural flow that is collected in the semi-arid area. But in arid area, you have to force or artificially you have to bring that water from the catchment area into a collection or into a storage place. However, several methods of water harvesting are used both in arid, semi-arid and other regions. Now, supplemental or life-saving or protective irrigation. The runoff collected from different water storage structures is of immense value for protecting the dryland crops from soil moisture stress during prolong, prolonged dry spells. In dry areas, water, not land, is the most limiting. Maximizing the water productivity is very, very necessary. Here we want to increase or get more crop per drop of water. So in this case, whenever we have water stored in structures, we should use it judiciously and quite efficiently so that we get higher production and total production is also higher. Supplemental irrigation is highly efficient practice for increasing productivity of crops in arid regions. The response of supplemental irrigation varies with crops, time, depth and method of water and fertilizer application. So these, these are the variables that will affect the response of supplemental irrigation. Irrespective of the stage of crop, irrigation is scheduled when soil moisture approaches PWP. PWP means permanent wilting point to save the crop. This is called as life-saving irrigation. Means if you do not apply water at this stage, crop will suffer from severe losses. Now the next component is water shed management. You have seen water harvesting is done. Watershed is also part of water harvesting. This is actually area from which water is harvested. So soil, water and vegetation are the most vital natural resources for the survival of the life on the biosphere. The prosperity and development of a nation depends to a great extent on natural resources and their management. Today these resources are under tremendous stress due to ever-increasing biotic pressure and mismanagement of these resources. The optimal management of these natural resources with minimal adverse environmental impact is a desirable not only for sustainable development but also for human survival. For the efficient management, one has to look for suitable units of management so that these resources are handled and manages effectively, collectively and simultaneously. It is not job of one farmer or one people because catchment area is very large area where large number of farmer and large number of people live. There may be some people who would not be doing farming also in catchment area or watershed areas. So the soil, water and vegetation can be managed efficiently by this uh, unit system. The watershed is an ideal unit for the natural resource management. So chronology of watershed development programs in the country, you can see 1973-74 drought prone area program, 77-78 desert development program, 1987 national research center for agroforestry Jhansi, 1989-90 integrated watershed development program. Most of them were go, uh, sponsored by the central government and uh, 1989 integrated afforestation and eco-development scheme, 1991 national watershed development project for rain-fed areas, 92 Indo-German watershed development program. Uh, there is really long list of uh, these watershed management program, Gui uh, 94 guidelines for watershed development, uh, 1999 watershed development fund. Uh, 2001 Common Guideline for Watershed Development, 2003 Hariali Guidelines released, 
2006 National Rainfed Area Authority. This is very important authority these days. Rainfed uh, National Rainfed Area Authority (NRAA). Students should have knowledge of this authority. What they are doing for rainfed agriculture. Then 2008 Common Guidelines for WSD, or so on. Or 2013, you you see uh, revisions added to 2008. Uh, Niranchal guidelines, Niranchal guidelines. So number of programs have come up. Government is interested to raise the uh, income and raise uh, conserve the resources in these important areas. Now let us see what is watershed. So it is a land area that captures rainfall and conveys the uh, overland flow and runoff to an outlet in the main flow. the term watershed is strictly refers to the division separating one drainage basin from another so at present the term watershed is defined as land area from which rain water drains to a common point in this context watershed is considered to be the synonymous with catchment area or drainage basin the word watershed introduced in 1920 and was used for the water parting boundaries watershed or catchment or drainage basin is that land area which drains to a common point called outlet with respect to the outlet the watershed consists of all uh, the land area that collects water which flows to the outlet during a rainstorm or rainfall in physical terms a watershed refers to the area lying above a given drainage point it may cover from less than 1 hectare to thousands of hectares depending upon the point of reference rain water from a few hectares of land may drain into a common small stream the few hectares of land will therefore be the watershed area of that stream the small stream runs into a larger stream the land area drained by a small stream makes up the watershed of the larger stream into which they flow you see your own hand there are several fingers and all these five fingers are going to the end and they are meeting at some point likewise water may come like fingers you may consider different uh, areas or channels or different uh, rills or different gullies or uh, different water flowing streams so and then they will uh, finally come to join a river so the watershed boundary is called the drainage divide precipitation received on the opposite side of a drainage divide does not contribute to the runoff of the particular adjoining watershed thus watershed is a geo hydrological unit of the delineated area from which the rain water drains through a common outlet the people animals and vegetation are part of the watershed community all depends of the uh, watershed and they in turn influence what happens on the topography of that area whether for good for bad means for whole watershed area if efficient is good then all the plants all the life all the people will be happy otherwise not see this is uh, what i was saying about your fingers so you can see there may be uh, different uh, tributaries you can say very very small small tributaries bringing uh, water to a common point see in the central place water is flowing and at the end the water is collected is at this blue place so this is actually a watershed and it can be in few hectares to millions of hectares so why we need watershed since watershed is a hydrological entity natural resources management and their utilization are best attempted by taking it as a unit of development planning proper rain water management conservation run off control and development of water resources is essential for meeting water demands of domestic drinking irrigation and industrial uses apart from development of agriculture it may encourage uh, areas of infrastructure development energy uh, health education and prosperity among the community management on watershed basis is now accepted as an essential feature for full and integrated development of any area that will be your integrated watershed management hence a watershed approach is needed to overall sustainable development let us see the size of the watershed questions are often asked on unit watershed size 
particularly in the context of large scale watershed development. However, a particular size of a watershed depends on the objective of the development. For major and medium irrigation projects, a watershed of 1000 of uh, square kilometer in size has to be considered at a small storage structure on a farm. The watershed size may be only a few hectare. However, the government regards small catchments of 300 to 500 hectare as a unit watershed. Large watersheds can be preferred in, in the plains, valleys area, areas where pasture and forest development is the major objective. From the land management point of view, a convenient size of watershed may vary from 500 to 1000 hectares. On an average, the watershed size of 2000 hectare is considered reasonable for agricultural development. The most appropriate size of the micro watershed for development at feed level is about 500 hectares. Now see classification of watershed as per as per SLUSI and you can see different categories, major delineation and regions it may be 270 to 1130 uh, lakh hectare, 1130 lakh hectares, basins uh, 30 to 300 lakh hectares, catchments 10 to 50 lakh hectares, sub catchments 2 to 10 lakh hectares and water shares 0.2 to 1.5 lakh hectare. And for micro delineation, Macro watersheds are for more than 50,000 hectares, sub watersheds 10,000 to 50,000 hectares, milli watersheds uh, 1,000 to 10,000 hectares, micro watersheds 100 to 1,000 hectares, and mini watersheds 1 to 100 hectares. So, mini watersheds are the smallest one, 1 to 100 hectares. Now, watershed management how best we can manage watershed so that we get good harvest of water without uh, affecting the soil health and health of the plants or forests. So, watershed management is the rational utilization of land, water and vegetation resources for optimum production with minimum hazards. It involves management of land surface and vegetation so as to conserve the soil and water for immediate use and long term benefits for the farmers and the society as a whole. In a watershed management system having favorable topography where improved land use practices could be introduced easily and precipitation distribution is not much uneven or erratic, such a system may be termed as well managed. Uh, watershed management is an integration of technologies within the natural boundaries of the drainage area for optimum development of land, water and plant resources to meet the basic needs of the people in a sustained manner. So, this is the main objective of watershed management that need of the people whosoever are living there may be farmer, may be non-farmer are met and at the same time the water is conserved, soil is conserved and also there is uh, no uh, deforestation. Watershed management may be defined as the process of formulating and carrying out a course of action involving manipulation of natural, agricultural and human resources of a watershed to provide resources that are desired by and suitable to the watershed community. So, what are the objectives of watershed management and you can find the advantages also you can convert these objectives into advantages also if these objectives are fulfilled. So, for example, to control damaging runoff and soil erosion, to protect, conserve and improve the natural resources for efficient and sustained production, to manage the watershed in order to minimize floods, droughts and landslides. See, this watershed management have very important role in managing or mitigating the ill effects of droughts and floods. To protect the uh, and enhance the water resources, reducing silting of conservation structure and conserving uh, rainwater. This silting results in a poor storage of water. To increase the groundwater recharge through in situ conservation and water harvesting structures to rehabilitate the deteriorating lands. 
ओवरऑल ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ ए वाटर शेड मैनेजमेंट आइदर सिंगल और इन कम्बिनेशन आर आउटलाइन स्टूडेंट्स कैन रिमेंबर इट एज ए पावर पी ओ डब्ल्यू ई आर सो पी कैन बी प्रोडक्शन ऑफ फूड फोडर फ्यूअल फ्रूट फाइबर फिश मिल्क ऑन सस्टेन बेसिस इट कैन बी कंट्रोल ऑफ द पोल्यूशन प्रिवेंशन ऑफ फ्लड सो देर आर थ्री पीज एक्चुअली ओ कैन बी ओवर एक्सप्लाइटेशन ऑफ रिसोर्सेज मिनिमाइजेशन बाई कंट्रोलिंग एक्सेसिव बायोटिक प्रेशर एंड ऑपरेशनल प्रैक्टिकेबिलिटी ऑफ ऑल ऑन फार्म ऑपरेशन एंड फॉलो अप प्रोग्राम्स एंड डब्ल्यू ऑफ पावर इज वाटर स्टोरेज एट कन्वीनियंट लोकेशन फॉर डिफरेंट पर्पजेज और वाइल्ड एनिमल एंड इंडिजिनस प्लांट लाइफ कंजर्वेशन एट सेलेक्टिव प्लेसेज एंड ई इज इरोजन कंट्रोल इको सिस्टम सेफ्टी इकोनॉमिक स्टेबिलिटी एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन आर इज फॉर रिचार्ज ऑफ ग्राउंड वाटर रिडक्शन ऑफ ड्राउट हेजार्स रिडक्शन ऑफ सिल्टेशन एंड मल्टीपर्पज रिजर्वायर्स एंड ऑफकोर्स रिक्रिएशन नाउ कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ वाटर शेड मैनेजमेंट प्रोग्राम सोयल एंड वाटर कंजर्वेशन वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग क्रॉप मैनेजमेंट एंड अल्टरनेटिव लैंड यूज सो दीज आर द फोर इंपॉर्टेंट मेजर दैट कैन बी अडोप्टेड फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ वाटर शेड मैनेजमेंट सोयल एंड वाटर कंजर्वेशन इज पॉसिबल द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल बिहाइंड सोयल कंजर्वेशन मेजर्स इज टू मिनिमाइज द वेलोसिटी ऑफ सर्फेस रन ऑफ द ई इज स्पीड ऑफ रन ऑफ सो दैट इरोजन इज लेस एंड इट इज पॉसिबल बाई थ्री वेज परमानेंट ट्रीटमेंट दैट इज हार्डवेयर ट्रीटमेंट मीन्स चेंज मेकिंग सम स्ट्रक्चर्स सेमी परमानेंट ट्रीटमेंट मीडियम सॉफ्टवेयर ट्रीटमेंट एंड टेम्परेरी ट्रीटमेंट मीन्स शॉर्ट सॉफ्टवेयर ट्रीटमेंट्स सो परमानेंट ट्रीटमेंट ऑन इंक्लूड्स योर बर्नस टेरेसेस एंड वाटर वेज आर द परमानेंट मेजर्स इन वाटर शेड मैनेजमेंट एंड दीज मेजर्स आर प्रोवाइडेड टू इम्प्रूव रिलीफ फिजियोग्राफी एंड ड्रेनेज फीचर्स ऑफ वाटर शेड एम्ड एट कंट्रोलिंग सोयल इरोजन रेगुलेटिंग सर्फेस रन ऑफ एंड रिड्यूसिंग पीक फ्लो रेट्स एंड ऑफकोर्स कंटूर बर्नस ग्रेडेड बर्नस एंड बेंच टेरेसिंग आर कैन बी मेड नाउ नंबर टू इज सेमी परमानेंट ट्रीटमेंट्स मीडियम सॉफ्टवेयर ट्रीटमेंट्स दीज आर यूजली इंटर बर्न ट्रीटमेंट्स वेयर फील्ड साइजेज आर लार्ज इन कन्वेंशनली बंडेड एरिया दे आर एडोप्टेड टू मिनिमाइज द वेलोसिटी ऑफ ओवर लैंड फ्लो एंड इट इंक्लूड्स की लाइन बर्नस स्टिप लेवलिंग लाइव बेड्स एंड वेजिटेटिव दीज मेजर्स में लास्ट फॉर टू टू फाइव ईयर्स सो देर फॉर दे आर सेमी परमानेंट नाउ देर कुड बी सम टेम्परेरी एडजस्टमेंट्स और ट्रीटमेंट्स दे आर रेफर्ड एज शॉर्ट सॉफ्टवेयर ट्रीटमेंट्स दीज आर सिंपली ट्रीटमेंट्स फॉर इन सी टू मॉइस्चर कंजर्वेशन एंड नीड्स रेनोवेशन एवरी ईयर सिंपल प्रैक्टिस लाइक कंट्रोल फार्मिंग कंपार्टमेंटल बंडिंग बी बी एफ मीन्स ब्रॉड बेड फरो सिस्टम डेड फरोज टिलेज एंड मल्चिंग हैव गेंड वाइड एक्सेप्टेंस इन द रिसेंट पास्ट नाउ क्रॉप मैनेजमेंट इन रेन फेड एरियाज लोकेशन स्पेसिफिक क्रॉप मैनेजमेंट पैकेज और प्रैक्टिस फॉर ड्राई लैंड क्रॉप्स हैव बीन डेवलप्ड बाई ड्राई लैंड रिसर्च सेंटर्स एंड एस ए यूज स्टेट एग्रीकल्चरल यूनिवर्सिटी और अदर रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूशन हैव डेवलप्ड सेवरल पैकेजेज लाइक चॉइस ऑफ क्रॉप दीज डेज पीपल कैन सेलेक्ट द क्रॉप सूटेबल फॉर दे रीजन एंड एंड वराइटीज आर आल्सो अवेलेबल स्ट्रिक क्रॉपिंग कैन बी प्रैक्टिस वेयर यू कैन ग्रो इरोजन परमिटिंग क्रॉप्स एंड इरोजन रेसिस्टिंग क्रॉप्स इन इन सर्टन स्ट्रिप्स ऑफ एट लाइन्स टेन लाइन्स इफेक्टिव वीट कंट्रोल पैकेजेज आर अवेलेबल क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम्स एफिशेंट क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम्स हैव बीन सजेस्टेड फॉर रेन फेड लैंड प्रिपरेशन मल्चिंग टेक्निक्स हैव बीन डेवलप्ड एंड देर आर सेवरल काइंड ऑफ मल्चिंग अवेलेबल ऑर्गेनिक मेन्योर रिकमेंडेशन हैव कम कम अप कंट्रोल कल्टिवेशन कवर क्रॉप्स आई पी एन एम एंड विंड ब्रेक्स एंड शेल्टर बेड्स एक्सेट्रा सो यू कैन सी देर आर लॉट ऑफ क्रॉप मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन फॉर इम्प्रूविंग द ईल्स इन रेन फेड फार्मिंग होप यू लाइक दिस लेक्चर एंड विल बी यूजफुल टू यू थैंक यू वेरी मच